Okay. <clears throat> Rewind again. Magasco and Jovi had a problem in the past. Okay. When uh, Jovi had a problem with Pete Bakadzi, and because at that time Magasco was signed to Empire, which was owned, which is still Wait, owned by Pete Bakadzi. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Not to cut you short, maybe also mention that Magasco was hanging around the New Bell crowd for a while when he just came from Bamenda. <laughs> no, I'm getting there. Don't worry, I'm getting okay. there. <laughs> okay. I'm getting. I want to okay. see how the conflict started. Yeah, and where Jovi's okay, reply okay. came from. <laughs> you understand? Okay. And the thing Jovi said okay. involves that thing that Magasco was hanging around Jovi. So, <clears throat> okay, it's a combination because everything Jovi, uh, the whole conflict and Magasco's uh, interview, those the explanation, all those things, you get the perfect picture and all those informations um, relate. Or let me just say they complete each other. Like they match out. Like when you listen yeah. to what Magasco said and what happened during and what was said during the conflict, all those things match. You understand? Which means okay, this whole yeah. thing is something which is supposed to be said, done, dealt with, and moved along. But I still see Jovi carrying it. I just yeah. believe the reason Jovi is bringing this thing up now is like I said back when i said like i said a few minutes ago when i said he ain't gonna do shit to my locks it's still hype he's hyping this whole scenario now the same thing he's doing with the names he called that's the whole reason for that for those names he called so pete bakadzi had a problem with uh jovi okay they were going back and forth on twitter and <clears throat> magasco was part of the empire camp at that moment at that time i think he was a poster kid for empire like the person who single-handedly carrying empire at that moment in time with the hits with the shows and all those things and the features you know and all that so magasco came at jovi and told him to stop disrespecting his boss and jovi called him i forgot the name he called him but he said when two bosses are talking you're not supposed to talk i give you 24 hours to apologize so after that <clears throat> Maga <laughs> okay because jovi said Pete wouldn't have signed you if it wasn't for me. Um, I even introduced you to Pete and most of these things. Okay, it's like there's somebody. So I was saying, um, Jovi said if it wasn't for him, uh, Pete wouldn't have signed Magasco. And Magasco <clears throat> was also a part of the Mumak clique. You know, the Mumak. Um, and which hi. is. Um, Asongani is saying hello, guys. Maybe we we'll just say hello. I think just Asongani has written in the chat box. And, uh... The okay. is also writing FYI, something like that. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to read okay. in the chat box and we proceed. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, um, Jovi told him if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have been signed. I wouldn't have signed you and all that. So what jovi was referencing because very few people know and magasco gave the full picture of it um that they, they were part of this click mumak which was owned by jules nia at that point in time that jules nia came to bamenda saw him and told him to come to yaoundi and work with um and said he liked his sound they would like to work together to expand his sound at that point magasco had the song line loba Jovi just blew up with Don for quite at that point in time. So when he went to Yaoundé, he saw Jovi. It wasn't like Jovi was the boss of Mumak. It was owned by Jules Nya. Okay. So they were just working together. Like uh, doing songs together. Magas he jumped on Jovi's song. Jovi jumped on his song. Magasco is on Jovi's album HIV. The song No Way. It's still one of my favorite Magasco or Jovi songs. One of my best Jovi songs and Maga one of my favorite Magasco songs, Lion Loba, which was already making its name on its own. Jovi now jumped on the remix, Lion Loba remix. <clears throat> so, um, uh, Magasco said during that time there was no contract signed when they were working with Mumak. Okay, there was no contract signed, and Jovi decided to leave to create um, New Bell Music when everybody was with Mumak. So that's how Mumak started crumbling and everybody started spreading and moving away. Right? So Pete, the way Pete found out about him is his song, um, Fine Boy. 
okay because he said yeah. pete heard the song fine boy on um not just uh at least not just okay.com that nigerian blog that they used to download music from in those days that blog so he heard the music yeah. there and so many nigerians were playing it and when he's let's just say in a public place and he said that's my song so many guys will refuse like that's a jamaican or that's a jamaican vibe and pete heard the song and he liked it so i think somebody told pete yeah. that that song is owned by that the guy who has a song is magasco you know so he had his magasco so he said are you sure that's a song he says his song he showed him the the this that all that pete told him he wants to sign him for them to to work on empire because he said he has tried empire and he hasn't taken off he has tried with doc z it failed Quick question. That, yeah now that's magasco version of what he said on karawa yeah that's magasco now explaining uh, why why Jovi okay. the claim he had that said without him P2 have signed him the claim he was trying to debunk that claim okay. and said he had nothing to do the yeah <clears throat> and why he took Pete's side okay you understand because he said he's a family okay. man he, he he's loyal he's a loyal person if he's working with you if he's hanging around you he always got your back that's what magasco said so that's why he replied yeah. because pete told him he wanted them he wants him to work with them now when pete even signed the contract with him magasco said he stayed for almost a year almost two years without hearing anything from pete they just signed him and kept him and the yeah. day pete said let's go it was a go and the heat started coming heat were coming heat were coming so magasco saved empire Magasco say made Pete realize what he was doing could work because he has tried with X Malia, it failed. He tried with Doc Z, it failed before. You understand? Yeah. So after that, at that point, yeah. Empire was just like a family. So Pete used to pay producers to produce songs for him and other guys, but he discovered that Magasco could produce. So Magasco ended up producing songs for so many artists, yeah. like in Empire, and producing Pete's own songs, doing hooks for Pete even has yeah. a, a joint album with pete you know has reference songs that he produced for pete and puzzle mix and master them you understand so that whole yeah. si system he was just like the backbone of empire the producer and the lead artist and the vocalist and all these things like he said the part he made a mistake was when he re pete realized he could produce that was when everything he he was just taking everything instead of receiving money to re, to record or produce a song peter just let him produce the song just say, okay he'll figure it out he'll produce it so from there um uh, okay going now to jovi saying without him pete wouldn't have signed him magasco said that wasn't true okay that that wasn't the case of Jovi signing him. So fast forward, he yeah. said at that point in time he took Pete's side and replied because he saw Empire as his family. And when Pete was going at Jovi, he was just sitting, he never knew it was happening. And his fans started tweeting and telling him, Hey, you go shit on so they go at your boss, you know, go talk, you leave him, you deliver and let it talk so at your boss. That's where Magasco said, Okay, he was young and dumb at that point and they were going at the boss of his family so he had to to react and they asked him when jovi said he gives you 24 hours to reply or else he said he, he knew jovi was strolling and joking because jovi wasn't gonna do any shit that and jovi did nothing he said he did not reply and jo, he did not apologize and jo, jovi didn't do anything and he knew jovi was just doing that for hype and uh, you know but right now he's not with empire there were some things that were not working with empire so they decided to split and yeah right now the pro conflict he has no problem with jovi because they don't even talk that much they never had a relationship at first because at mumak they were just together working it's not like they were close or bodies and all that that but now they don't he doesn't have any problem with jovi at that point in time he came at jovi because he felt like Jovi was disrespecting his family and was standing up for his family but right now he don't think he has any problem with jovi and he doesn't know if jovi thinks the same but jovi just recently now made us understand that he's still living in 2018 or 2017. <laughs> You understand okay i think um jovi said in this particular interview in question on la vie de on la vie de fugil that mm -hmm. he does not reconcile with people that certain lines when you cross he does not reconcile so he's that kind of guy 
so what, what did Magasco said that kind of a line what did that kind what did Magasco actually say that would make Jovi react the way he's reacting now like yeah first of all when he mentioned Pascal the journalist was like what even Pascal he was like yes yeah. he mentioned Pascal's name today so I know so mm -hmm. coming back to Magasco's case I get in this one, I feel like yeah, maybe Jovi exaggerated the the, the, the anger. He's exaggerating because it's public. Not so, I feel like when Magasco presents it like he was with Jovi just in Muma, yeah. I feel like okay, that's that's why I ask you that's his own um his own um how can I call it? His own. He said none of them was signed. None because of them was signed. They didn't no, have any document, anything. If you recall, that couple of there are a couple of new bell music songs which Magasco is not singing in the, his, in the crowd. One of course. Two. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So it means that even after they have left Momak and Jovi has created his new bell, yep. Magasco was still hanging around them. I cannot yep. say for certainty if he was already signed with Empire at the time. No, he wasn't whatever, signed. Whatever. Because after then Jovi he, left, Magasco was still in the... After indie. they have left... Yeah. So yeah. it means that he did not end only at Mumak, even while Jovi was at, he has created New Bell now, Magasco yeah. was around New Bell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So secondly, I also feel that it's different when I'm with my grand, and that's another grand and that called, I think, beside of my grand. But if this other grand is a grand who used to help me, this one gives me bread and chocolate, this one gives me tea. Mm -hmm. I'm going to recule as we say in French. And then look for a strategic way to give the most neutral answer possible. Mm -hmm. Especially in a fight of egos, where mm -hmm. it's not like uh, what was his name? Pete was wrong or Jovi was right. Mm -hmm. It was just a battle of I am the boss, you are the boss. And I, I one of the things I feel like Jovi is I always I don't think Jovi should be the boss of the level. He might be the talent boss behind the scene, but the corporate boss or the operation boss should be more of a business-minded person. Yeah, it's Soja, not Jovi. Soja is the manager of uh, New Bell Music. Be no, Soja is the Soja? manager of Soja. He is the manager of the company. You, yes, I've, you have mentioned that before that Soja is the manager. Yeah. But the role which a manager has to play of an artist, shush, chill, let me handle this, or putting out press release, or doing interviews, I don't even know the soldier's face. You should have been doing interviews to clarify situations, to 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 escalate, as we say. So mm. one manager is in manager. That's why I keep on saying that I have a problem with the team be around these guys. There is a bullet role you play, or a bulletproof role you play, where you jump in front of the bullet and you're like, man, yeah, you put it off, you take the shot. That's your role. That's the only thing you can really do. You are not singing. So what are you doing? You cannot handle the situation to protect your life. A manager is not an so is not a PR. A manager is not a PR. No. No. So in um, a typical corporate situation, you have yeah. the PR, you have the A and R, you have the <clears throat> well, uh, okay, let me just say the, the PR, HR, the human resource and the rest and, and all that. Some levels or have short or have um, that they call it talent development or something like that. Something yeah. Like that. Artists, um, but yeah, artist development, yeah. yeah. But now the manager is the one coordinating most of those things. Mm -hmm. So in a startup environment like Cameroon, where we don't have A and R, we don't have PR, you mm -hmm. as a manager plays all of those roles mm -hmm. in smaller quantities. You should be able to to coach the artist with regards to talent development. You should be able to write up things for his PR message to put out there. You should be able to do interviews for him. So you should be able to negotiate this. So you should play all of those things. And that's what people, when you do management training, you do a little bit of marketing, a little bit of IT, a little bit of accounting, a little bit of... Because you'll be called upon to manage all of these arms of the business. Mm -hmm. So if someone calls himself a manager, even if you are not the PR... You should be able to take some of those bullets in small doses, especially when in a startup environment where you don't have those arms of the business. You have to fill mm -hmm. those blank spaces. So coming mm -hmm. back to the Magasco situation, mm -hmm. I feel like Jovi is exposed to too many bullets, and that is affecting his 
Go when you hear him talk, you see that he's trying to go for his le- for a legendary status. But if your legendary flag has always been dragged in the mud from now and from now and then, it's difficult for you to establish that status. And the best idea or the best solution for Jovi is to move away from the landline or somewhere to share that stage with him where you are the talent boss, I am the administrative boss. I, mm. I talk on all these kind of things. You talk on all these kind of things. Don't cross this line. So in that situation, I just feel like Magasco should not have come into it, but mm-hmm. Jovi handled it poorly. And that's Why also, though? Like because the first one, I felt like Adox, Adox was at fault to the greater extent. This one, I feel like Jovi was at fault to the greater extent because he won. Si c'est un petit frère, je laisse comme ça. Je laisse que c'est un petit frère. Mm-hmm. I don't start. The same thing he went and did in this lyrical Joe Beef. You start affronting the petit frère as if now he's your egal. And you are threatening him, and you are planning, and you are making all your 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 superstar punching moves around him. It's not worth that energy. If you are a boss like Pete, go at Pete. This person talks to you, just turn and look at him one eye. Uh, Ready answer. Just uh, like a grandfriend in the quad, just look at that paper like, hand. Eh? You okay, back, listen, <clears throat> you say something like if two grand friends are fighting, which both of them have, let's like, just say, assisted you or given you bread at one point in time, right? You just have to find a strategic way to get in. Yeah. But uh, Jovi yeah, and Magasco. No, Jovi and Magasco were not. Jovi wasn't signed to Magasco, and Magasco wasn't signed to Jovi, or they were not signed to to Momak. They were just working together. It wasn't was like Jovi to, gave him bread or handed. I, it wasn't no, like Jovi gave him a hand out. Like uh, <sighs> I don't know how much I'm involved in the industry in Cameroon. But there's mm. that tendency when people are better off they start disrespecting those who look like their lifeline at the time when they really had nothing so mm. to say that jovi did not give him any bread at any time i don't feel like it's cool mm. for me i don't know i don't mean bread like real bread mm. but i mean like even just the shine which he was giving him in those videos at the time when he was not yet a star like that was worth mm. something and I'm very sure knowing how, but I'm just guessing, I may be wrong. But I'm very sure knowing how the industry goes. That mm-hmm. he was already putting him, giving him those plugs and that placement at that time. There mm-hmm. are many other favors he might have been doing for him behind the scenes. I'm just guessing, I may be wrong. But to say that he did not do anything but, for him but, in the uh, past uh, might be a strength. It can be interpreted in various angles, mm-hmm. but I feel like from what we could see, mm. Jovi was a grand friend to Magasco at the time. Mm. Not necessarily age, but in terms of positioning. So, and Jovi talking to Pete, that's one of the things I always said too. When Jovi goes at Pete or at Valsero, I'm like, you always talk about loyalty and respect. Okay, maybe you don't owe those guys loyalty, but at least I think you owe them respect. Yep. But if you listen to this interview and the kind of things he's saying about Valsero, I just feel like, yeah, he's been dealt with his own cards, man. The same disrespect which he comes towards Grand Fresh, that's why Petit Fresh also come towards him. The truth and is, between, especially my own point of view, especially my own point of view with Jovi and Macasco, especially is <clears throat> Jovi is amplifying this whole thing because it was public. It was on Twitter. Everybody saw it. So Jovi is trying to build on it that's just my point of view this is because there's nothing magasco said that warrants jovi to hold this kind of a grudge for this long but based yeah, on what if that is exactly it, what caused if that is exactly what's what caused jovi to be mad i just believe right now the energy he's carrying this conflict with is just hyping the problem much. it's just yeah like i said so his I, boss I like is boss is just he's just using that out. conflict to generate buzz because that was something that was made public so he's still milking it. That's just my point of view. I feel like this whole use of conflict for birds thing, there's only as much birds as you can get from one particular conflict. So 
That's why he still talk about it. That's why he's still holding on to yeah. so many of them. Because every time those conflicts come about, there's always a viral moment, there's always a tweet. That's why the more people he has conflict with, that's the more times every time those guys talk or every time he replies, the thing comes up and it reignites the conflict. Mm -hmm.